All right, in this video, we move into the wide world of chordates. So no longer will we be talking about things that don't have backbones. Actually, we're going to talk about two more things that don't have backbones, and then everything else is going to have a backbone. But everything that we're going to talk about from henceforth is a chordate. And a chordate is an animal. Oh, there's some vertebrates, birds and people and groundhogs. Um, chordates have the following five characteristics. They have a notochord. This is what they're named for. They have a dorsal tubular nerve cord. This is hollow nerve cord. It's fine. Uh, pharyngeal pouches or slits. This says clefts. You see them called pouches. You see them called gills. There's all kinds of things there. They have a post-anal tail. And they post-anal tail means that the tail is after the anus, instead of the anus being at the end of the tail, which is what you see with a lot of um, invertebrates. And they have something called an endostyle, which is not present on this picture. Um, this doesn't show the endostyle either. This does show the notochord. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to just go through these five things and define them. So the notochord is a flexible rod-like structure extending the length of the body. It's the first part of the endoskeleton to appear. So the rest of the skeleton kind of forms based upon this. Uh, it serves as a kind of axis for muscle attachment and permits undulatory movements. And we've talked about undulatory movements before, as opposed to like side to side, it's more like up and down sort of motion, which you see mammals and other chordates uh, using. Um, <clears throat> For a few chordates, just two, actually, the notochord persists all throughout life, but in most chordates, the notochord is replaced by a vertebra or a backbone. And so here's a cross-section, so you can see the notochord. Um, and notice here, here's the notochord, and the nerve cord is called the dorsal nerve cord because the nerve cord is actually dorsal to the notochord. And in a lot of species that we've looked at, you'll note that the nerve cord is actually in the ventral section. It's, you have to get underneath it to find it, whereas in, in uh, chordates, it is dorsal. It's on the back. And that brings us to the dorsal tubular nerve cord. Sometimes we'll just see it called a hollow nerve cord, like you see on this particular picture. And the nerve cord uh, is dorsal to the digestive tract, <clears throat> is a tube in that it is a hollow cord. And in many invertebrates, this is the opposite. It's solid and it's ventral to the digestive tract. And this tube kind of forms when the ectotherm uh, will enfold on itself. Here's a picture of that happening. It's called neurulation, where here's the ectophor or the ectoderm, the outermost layer, and it folds in on itself, creating this kind of um, tube, basically. Um, which is like basically what would be our spinal cord and many other organisms, their spinal cord as well. And then the anterior end becomes the brain. Basically, the anterior end enlarges over time, becomes the brain. And typically, this dorsal nerve cord is protected by vertebra. Um, and the, in the head, it's protected by a skull, like a cranium or something along those lines. Uh, pharyngeal pouches or slitches, slits, slitches. Pharyngeal pouches or slits or gills. You see them called gills sometimes. Apparently there was cleft on the other one. Every time there's pharyngeal in there, they're called this because they're uh, around the pharynx, which is in the neck area of an organism. Uh, these are openings that lead from the pharyngeal cavity, again, which is like the uh, nose, mouth area, neck, throat area, to the outside. All right. And they do this by folding in the ectoderm. <clears throat> And so aquatic chordates have uh, these slits still present in them, right? This is what forms gills, um, and they use this for respiration. For terrestrial chordates, uh, they form many different structures. Obviously, if you look at the side of our face, we don't have open slits there. That would be weird. And so those pharyngeal pouches are still present in our embryos, however, and they become other things. For instance, in us, they become our inner ear bones and thyroid and some other things. All right, so here's here's actually a picture of that. Um, so you can see those gill slits becoming um, in the lamprey. They're just pretty plain. They start to be a little more different with sharks, but then in a teleost, you have the operculum, which covers that up. We're going to talk about that specifically as we get there. Here they are in, um, I don't know what this is over here. I'm assuming it's a five-week whatever this is. This is supposed to be a human, but 
I mean, it's kind of odd, but it does give you a picture of what these things become, right? So you're, they become the, the little bones inside your ear. They become, this is a eustachian canal that connects your ear to your throat, the hyoid bone, which is, um, and then your throat cartilage. Um, so those pharyngeal, pharyngeal pouches still become things. All right, fourth is the endostyle. The endostyle becomes the thyroid gland, which is found in all chordates. The thyroid gland is found in all chordates, and it's used for different things. It's used to trap food in protochordates, protochordates being the first chordates. Uh, it's used to do that in lamprey larvae as well. Our own thyroid is one of the organs that regulates our metabolism, and so... Yeah, endostyle is something that's found in all chordates, and so that's why it's mentioned. Not a whole lot to talk about there. And then lastly, the post-anal tail. Um, the post-anal tail is added to the body, again, beyond the digestive tract. The anus represents the end of the digestive tract, and so the tail is added beyond that. Typically, the tail is used for motility uh, movement. It's all not all animals uh, retain their post-anal anal tail, like us, for instance. Um and initially, obviously, it was a, there for aquatic propulsion, but later it has been used for many different things. And you have here a picture of all the different tails out there, depending on the type of organism it's going to use its tail for different things, uh, or nothing at all, just as an ornament to show the world, see, here's my tail. And so all chordates have a post-anal tail at some point in their development. Again, like all these other things, um, at some point in the development can be lost, but at some point in the development, these five things all chordates have.